In this video, we'll see how we can use query function to uh, match a range of dates. So we have a data set here. You see how in a column we have our dates. And these are Google Sheets or Excel dates. And we're going to have to use those to match what we need to match. To be able to do this, uh, we'll have to understand how Google Sheets stores dates. So the way Google Sheets stores dates is by basically using regular numbers. So for example, if we go here and type a date, let's say 7 1 2017. That's our date. But if we really want to see what happened here, I'm going to go back here and switch the formatting of this number to a regular number. And you can see that the number that's stored, maybe I should just use what happens when you do automatic. Oh, that's probably what I should have done. So, anyways, for 42,917, that's what we get when we look at our date. And when I switch back, we're back to that original date. If I switch back to a date formatting. But in reality, the date formatting is just the way things look. What's being stored is still this number, 42,917. So we have to understand what that 42,917 number represents. So to kind of understand that, I'm going to just type some numbers. One, maybe like seven, and then I'll do like... 365, 366, 367, that should do what we need. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it over here, and I'm going to highlight what I have there. It's already highlighted and just switch this to a date formatting. First of all, let's look at what's happening here. So the number one, that was 1231.18. 99 apparently so then the number seven that i have is 1900 year and it's january the 6th so basically if you look from here through here this is six days after that and if you look at the difference between one and seven that's exactly that six that we have and then we look at like 365, we get to like 12, 30, 1900. So we basically keep adding one more day, one more day, one more day, which is basically increasing the number by one. And then this is our, you know, December 30th. Then the next one, 366 is December 31st. And then one more after that, we end up with our January 1st, 1901, which is one day after is the next year, the first day. And so it goes. So basically we have some starting point for our date and we start from that and we keep increasing the number and that creates our date. So when we look like this 42,917, basically we're saying that's that many days after our initial date that we have. And if we switch, we get a pretty looking date formatting. There it is. So 7-1-2017. All right. So now that we know that, we are going to go ahead and use our query function. So if you're not sure what's going on here, first of all, let's just talk about that. In this cell in A3, I have my query function. And in query function, the first thing you reference your data which is the data I have on the other tab. So if I go back to my transactions tab, this is the data I'm working with. And that's what I'm referencing as a range in there. And then what I did uh, here, usually type the query you want to use, but instead I just refer to this A1 cell. So I can basically just type what I want in here without having to go back to this formula every time. And finally, one means that our data has one header row. So in our transactions, this is one, one header row, right? So that's our basic query function structure. Uh, if you want a little more detail about that, go back and watch the first video and it will make a lot more sense. 
So now let's try to do our date. So what I'm trying to accomplish, let's just do something simple here. So we have a bunch of dates here. Let's say we wanted to pick everything starting from June 1st, 2016 and after. And the date column is the column A. So I'm going to go back here and say where. I want to make sure I also select the date column so we can see what's going on there. Select A, where A, which is the date column, is greater or equal to, and this is where we have to say the date it is greater or equal to. I don't have that date yet because I cannot really type just a date here. So if I just go ahead and type the date, it's not going to work. So uh, to make it work, we'll have to figure out what is the number for the date that we're targeting. The date that I set was like June 1st, 2016, right? So there it is, that's that date. So I'm gonna simply switch this to automatic. So that's 42,522. So I'm gonna go back here and say equals greater or equal to 42,522, hit enter. Give it a second, and there we go. So we have our dates. I'm gonna format this column as a date for now. There is a nicer way of handling this, but for now, we'll just do it this way. I'm just gonna select the date formatting. There we are, so we can look at the dates. Uh, we should see that every single date we have here is after that particular date, which is like, June 1st, 2016. So if you want to pick a date range, what you could do, you could use an AND statement, right? So let's say I want everything from uh, June 1st, 2016 through, I don't know, January 31st, 2017. I'm gonna go back here. So let's figure out what's January 31st, 2017 is. I'm gonna go back here, automatic, so that's our number. So going back to our query, I'm gonna say, I need it to be greater than this date, and that same A column needs to be smaller or equal to my 42766 date. There we are. So now we're within that range. So the other thing is a lot of times what's going to happen, you're going to have these dates possibly just typed in a cell like this. And you want to be able to just reference to this and be able to automatically dynamically pull what you need based on what's selected in this two cells. So let's, let me add a row here and I'm gonna say start end. So those are my dates. And here we'll have to do some changes. So right now, instead of just typing the text string for our query, what I'm going to do is build that text string using a formula. Then what we need to do is create a formula that will look like this end result that we have, which is this 42,522, 42,766. But you have to do it using this two cells on the right. So to be able to do it, the first thing we need to know is how to use the ampersand sign for concatenation. And I'm gonna very quickly just cover it so you can see how it actually works. So let's say I have two cells here and this one says, a, B, C, and this one says D, E, F. And what I want to do is combine those two cells together. So if I type equal sign, and then I'm gonna say, let's take this cell, and then I'm gonna put and sign, uh, which is like a join for our text, and then I'm gonna do this. So basically what I'm saying, let's take the H3 cell content and join it with whatever is in I3. If I hit enter, that's what I'm gonna get basically those two combined. 
Now, another interesting thing is that uh, this and sign is like, you can think about it as a plus sign for text, right? So right now I take this H3, which is ABC, and I wanna add, let's say, my own text that I have. So what I can do, if that's my own text, I'm gonna provide that text in quotes. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that, well, that's gonna be and that my text my text could have like spaces in them if if necessary like this so that's abc and space because i have space in my text and my text and then i can do another and sign after that which is a, basically another plus for our text and then add this to it so that's going to be like a full something that's combined with this abc then my own text and then this so that's the way you can use the and sign to concatenate your text, basically join it together. So now let's build our text that we need here. This is going to be my text that I have. And because I'm going to be doing this in a formula, I'm going to first put it in quotes from both ends like this. And then I'm going to start with my equal sign. So I'm saying equals to this text that I have. So if I enter, there shouldn't really be any difference whatsoever in this, with exception of that now we're kind of using this formula instead of using just the plain text. What we need to do is change a few things here. So I'm going to go back here. And here, instead of saying uh, equals to 42,000, well, let's start with this one because that's going to be easy. So right now, this is the text that we have. And what we need to do, we need to make sure that this 42,766, which if you remember is this end date, is dynamic. So instead of just typing this hard-coded 42,766, I want to be able to use this. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that 42,700, uh, whatever it was. And after that, I'm going to put my and sign and join it with this. I'm going to hit enter. Apparently it takes a little bit of time to update, but there it is. So it did update. So we get the same end result. But if I go ahead and change this to, let's say, let's do 28. So now, see, we get those dates as well as a result. So we're able to do the end date dynamic, but now instead of using 42,522, we're going to again replace it with that cell reference. And what we'll have to do, first of all, I'm going to do a quote right before that and quote right after that. That separates that number out. I'm going to delete the number few spaces here to separate them. So this is basically going to be the first part of our text over here on the left. And then I'm going to do my and sign. I'm going to join it with this. And then I'm going to join it again, with my second and sign with the red. So I can leave the spaces on, but I don't have to. So those spaces don't really matter because they don't happen within parentheses. Those are our formula spaces and they're going to be ignored. There it is, we're gonna take this first part of the text, join it with this start date, and then join it again with this end and this other part of the text, and then join it again with the end date. We hit enter, and that should give us a dynamic way of extracting what we need to be extracted. So if we go back now and change our date range, so let's say we want to start 10, 1, 2015, and we want to go all the way through 6, or f I don't know, 6, 1, 2016. And there we have it. And that's the way we can actually make it dynamic, refer to cells, and create our own text out of it. And you can see when we use the and sign for concatenation, 
it's not actually using the visual, it's still using what's actually in a cell. And what's in a cell, if you remember for a date, is really in that number. So it takes that number and puts it in this string and it simply just works. And that's one method of using dates. Query function actually has a built-in date functionality in it as well. However, it works with SQL or MySQL standard dates, meaning regular Excel dates like this or regular Google Sheets dates, they don't work with that. And we'll talk about that in a separate video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for new videos.